Hey everyone, I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will learn about ASP.NET Core MVC. Let's look at today's agenda. We shall begin with understanding what is MVC pattern. Then we will see what is ASP.NET Core MVC. Followed by which we will look at the functions of MVC. And then understand the different components of ASP.NET Core MVC. Finally, we have a demo wherein we will build our first ASP.NET Core MVC application. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. What is MVC pattern? The model view controller MVC architectural pattern divides an application into three major component groups model, view, and controller. The principle behind developing MVC is the separation of concerns. This principle implies that software should be classified based on the type of task it performs. Separation ensures that the business model is simple to test and can change without becoming too involved in low-level implementation details. Using this MVC pattern, User requests are routed to a controller who is in charge of interacting with the model to conduct user actions and receive query results. The controller selects the view to be displayed to the user and supplies it with any model data it requires. What is ASP.NET Core MVC? The ASP.NET Core MVC framework is a lightweight, open source, and highly testable presentation framework designed specifically for use with ASP.NET Core. ASP.NET Core MVC is an application framework that allows you to create modern web apps by using the MVC model view controller architectural pattern. ASP.NET Core MVC provides a pattern based approach to developing dynamic websites that allow for a clear separation of concerns. It allows you to complete markup control, facilitates TDD-friendly development, and corresponds to the most recent web standards. Functions of MVC Let's look at the model functions, the responsibilities that a model carries. In an MVC application, the model represents the application's state and any other business logic or activities that should be executed by it. Business logic and any implementation logic for maintaining the application's state should be wrapped in the model. View model classes intend to contain the data to display on that view are often used in strong type views. The model is used by the controller to construct and populate this view model instances. View responsibilities Views are in charge of displaying content through the user interface. They embed .NET code in HTML markup using the Razor View engine. Views should have minimal logic, and any logic should be related to presenting content. Consider using a view component, view model, or view template to simplify the view if you need to perform a logic in view files to display data from a complex model. Now let us look at the functions of a controller. Controllers are the components that manage user input, interact with the model, and finally choose which view to render. The view just displays information in an MVC application. The controller processes and responds to the user input and interaction. The controller is the initial entry point in the MVC architecture, and it is responsible for deciding which model type to interact with and which view to represent. Hence, its name is controller as it responds to a given request. Now, let us look at the components of ASP.NET MVC. Some of the components of MVC are routing, model binding, model validation, dependency injection, filters, and areas. Now, let us look at them one by one. At first, we have routing.
ASP.NET Core MVC is built on top of ASP.NET Core Routing, a robust URL mapping component that enables the creation of applications with logical and searchable URLs. This allows us to establish URL naming patterns for applications that perform well for search engine optimization and link generation, regardless of how the files on your web server are arranged. Routes can be defined with a simple route template syntax that takes into account route value limitations, defaults and optional values. Next we have model binding. Model binding in ASP.NET Core MVC transforms client requests such as form values, route data, query string parameters and HTTP headers. It transforms this data into objects that the controller can handle. As a result, the controller logic does not have to do the job of determining the incoming request data. Instead, the data is passed as parameters to its action methods. Next, we have model validation. Validation is supported in ASP.NET Core MVC by decorating your model object with data annotation validation attributes. Before values are sent to the server, the validation attributes are checked on the client side. The framework validates request data on both the client and the server side. Dependency injection. ASP.NET Core includes dependency injection capabilities. Controllers in ASP.NET Core MVC can request required services through their constructors, allowing them to follow to the explicit dependencies principle. Dependency injection is a software design technique that achieves inversion of control between classes and their dependencies. Filters Filters in ASP.NET Core enable code to be executed before or after particular stages of the request processing pipeline. Filters can be used as attributes on controllers or actions. Filters manage duties such as authorization, restricting unauthorized access to resources, and response catching. Filters allow for the execution of custom pre- and post-processing logic for action methods and they may be C to run at certain points in the execution pipeline for given request. Last, we have areas. Areas allow you to divide a large ASP.NET Core MVC web app into smaller functional groups. An area is an MVC structure that exists between an application. Logical components such as model, controller, and view are kept in separate folders in an MVC project, and MVC uses naming conventions to build a relationship between these components. It may be good to partition a large app into different high-level functional regions. For example, consider an e-commerce app with numerous business units such as checkout, billing, and search among others. Each of these units has its own set of logical component views, controllers, and models. Now let us look at the demo. In this demo, we will create our first ASP.NET Core MVC application. So first we need to install the required software and set up the system for ASP.NET Core MVC development. Firstly, we need .NET Core SDK Software Development Kit. Then we need to install the SQL Server and then we need to install editor like Visual Studio. Once you have installed the Visual Studio, click on Launch. Visual Studio 2019 is getting opened. So this is how the Visual Studio 2019 looks like. Towards the left hand side, we have the recent applications which we have worked on. And towards the right side, we have the options to clone a repository, to open a project or a solution, to open a local folder or create a new project. So click on create a new project. Here we have different project templates. 
we have console application which is used for creating a command line application that can run on .NET Core, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Similarly, we have other templates like ASP.NET Core, Web App, Blazor WebAssembly app and if you scroll down you have many more templates. But for this project we need the template ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller. Since this project, this video is related to MVC, we need this template. So select this template. This template basically is used for creating an ASP.NET Core application with ASP.NET Core MVC model view and controller. So select this, click on next. Give the project name. So we'll enter it as a demo since we are showing a demo. So we'll enter the project name demo. If you want the solution name to be different from the project name, then check this box and provide the solution name. So we'll keep it as it is. Click on next. Select the target framework, authentication type if required. Then click on create. Here you go. The project is successfully created. So here you can see there are different types of files and folders. For this template, the addition of folders is the controller, model and view. So these three folders are added for this particular template MVC. You can check out our previous video on ASP.NET Core tutorial wherein I have explained each of these folders in detail. Open views and in shared you can see layout.cs.html. Open this file. So let's click on run and see what is the output. So click on run, here you can see build started. Here you can see it is running on the local host server. So this is the project, this is the template. Let us go back to the Visual Studio and change this. So this is where you can change the title from demo will change it to simply learn similarly if you want to change the home or the privacy you can change it here this is where you modify all the setup so we'll reset and click on run restart So here you can see the demo is changed to simply done. So this is how we get started with MVC application. From here you can modify all this. Go back to the Visual Studio and modify. If you click on home, this will come back to the same home page. Click on privacy, it shows this page. So this was about the template model view controller. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss ASP.NET in more detail. So with that we have reached the end of this video, like and share it if you found it interesting. Thank you for being here, keep learning and stay tuned to see you. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.